All right, guys, we've got a real solid, incredible, uh, cutting edge uh, interview coming up here. So don't go anywhere. We're about to jump right into this. We've got uh, known around the world as the world's most famous farmer here in Israel in the studio. So don't go anywhere. This is going to be cutting edge. Stay tuned. Welcome back to this Israel, guys, where we believe in a world of Jew hatred and anti-Israel propaganda. You should have a direct connection to the land and people of Israel. I'm Joshua, and we are back here with the Israel guys. Guys, before we jump into this, don't forget how this thing keeps going is we got to subscribe. You got to go ahead and leave comments. We got to get involved, right? Uh, in order to change the narrative, we need more of you to get involved. With that, Mr. Joel Salatin. We're here in the studio together. This is a great honor to have you here. Uh, Polyface Farm. Uh, people know the name Joel Salatin as uh, Google. Joel Salatin. Uh, <laughs> even though maybe you, you yourself, I mean, Google, that's totally opposite of everything you represent. Uh, Joel Salatin, known as the world's uh, most famous farmer. Uh, Christian libertarian, environmentalist, capitalist, lunatic farmer. Right? That's how they. This is how <laughs> they would right. describe you. On the, well, uh, I actually took that moniker several years ago after, you know, uh, when you're when you're when you're an organic farmer, you're supposed to be for, uh, you know, uh, uh, teachers unions and big government and everything else. And uh, so I finally got tired of being put in that box. And so, uh, <laughs> kind of to uh, to protect myself, I, I made the I made up the own moniker, and it, it helps to kind of take the edge off of off of those stereotypes. How did you, how, did, how would you say, um, of course, we invited you to come and you came here to Israel and we've been helping with the farmers. That's a backdrop of how you got here, but your love for Israel is before we start and we're going to go in a little bit of a political direction here in a minute, but just basic level. How did, where does this love for Israel come from? I think all the audience is wondering, how is Joel Salton? Is this a surprise? Maybe Joel Salton, a farmer loves Israel and the Jewish people. What, where does that come from? Well, um, uh, you know, Genesis 12 is still there. The Abrahamic covenant is real. Um, you know, my dad flew in the Navy in World War II, and uh, basically all of his lifelong friends after that experience were the Jewish guys uh, that were in the in the crew uh, because they had so much in common. And um, and so I I have. I have always appreciated that this 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 focal point of of the, the the great conflict between uh, God and Satan is going to be culminated here, and uh, and so being a a lover of history and of how stories unfold, uh, the drama the drama of the ages yeah is is right here. So we sit on Mount uh, the mountain that, that Genesis 12 happened the other day. You've been here now for three days, right? Three right. days, and we've, uh -huh. we've, we've seen a lot of the land of Israel. You, sat, you, you stood on top of that mountain, the same mountain Abraham stood on top of. And sure. So Genesis 12, did, did that change your uh, your view of what that— that uh, the, It did didn't that connect change my view. It just, it just you get chill bumps, and, and you realize you're, you're standing on on uh, on historically holy ground, uh, and and it gives you a great sense of, uh, 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 of that this is not yet culminated. I, I think that's that's what coming here and participating does uh, is you realize this story isn't done. It's not over. It's not yeah. over. And yeah. to be able to write yourself, to be able to uh, to have a, a little paragraph uh, in your own life in that unfolding story yeah. is is drama. Right. It's 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 true uh, Christian believer drama that you can that you can uh, get for yourself. I think, uh, as we mentioned, the world's most famous farmer. It helped. It, it, and we were talking about a, a southern gentleman uh, from the southern southern uh, uh, United States, mm -hmm. and, and people have to think of Mark Twain being a famous, you know, uh, educator and writer at the time. Maybe sure. you know, uh, on the world stage, maybe maybe uh, Mark Twain was a bit more famous. Even I mean, he was the most Certainly. famous person on the planet right. at the time. Um, he comes to Israel in uh, nineteen uh, or, or, or eighteen sixty seven, I believe, and uh, he comes. And he says, there's no vegetation. It's, it's completely eroded of any kind of life. It's all dead. Um, your experience is you've come here and you've, you've been on these mountains. You've seen, uh, what, would you give us a quick update from a farmer, a Southern uh, <laughs> United States uh, uh, raised, uh, maybe, maybe a, 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 maybe a quick update from when Mark Twain was here. Have we seen Have we seen some good things and are we going in a good direction? Is the state of Israel, what kind of progress have you see on the ground uh, for the nation? 
Well, I mean, I, I see, I see both things. Uh, first of all, there is definitely a, um, you know, a, a flourishing abundance yeah. uh, in certain areas. There is still ongoing. For sure, a tremendous amount of overgrazing, mm-hmm. a tremendous amount of mismanagement, soil erosion, ongoing, and so you know you have you have that that positive negative. Right. It's happening uh, simultaneously. So with your with your skill set, uh, as we're going around, we're definitely there. There's some there's some room for some great encouragement that you guys are good doing a great job, and at the same time there are some there, there's some room for some education, uh, and you're finding that that's that's uh, there's a need there. There is, and and one of the obviously the the biggest thing here in Judea and Samaria, uh, where you have this this intermingling of yeah. the Arab Israeli communities, yeah. uh, and, and you have farmland that buttresses uh, the Arab uh, uh, communities, the um, the the burden. Uh, and and the difficulties that these uh, mm. Jewish farmers face, right. just holding on to their equipment, their livestock, yeah. and things. And so, things that we would do, for example, in America, you know, you wouldn't think twice about leaving your herd of sheep or, or your flock of sheep or your herd of cows, you know, out on the back forty yeah. and going to bed with your family sure. uh, at night here. Impossible. Uh, that's that's very very difficult, if not impossible. I mean, you need you need security, sure. Which then you know adds logistic issues, pricing issues, and all that. But lamb prices are twice as high as they are in the U.S. <laughs> so right. this is a real lamb market, which is cool. As as we dive in, I want to get more into the political front of what's going on here. When when you were uh, sitting on your farm in America, and you traveled the world, so you're you're not just you know you're not in a bubble. Yeah, uh, you're you're somebody that's traveled the globe, every b- corner of the world, uh, coming in t- here to Israel. So you're very educated on g- global what's happening in the world. Was there anything that has struck you as something that the world is absolutely ignorant of in your three days? Just topical, quick to the point. I mean, because sure. I know there are, because we've talked, sure. yeah. but there's some things that the world needs to understand, especially in a conservative world that says they support Israel. I think there's a few points. Mm-hmm. That they're totally clueless of that that if just the top of your head yeah what what are a couple well, the, of these the, points the, the number the number one is uh, I will never use the term West Bank again that's big uh, that that's big yeah. West West Bank if you use the term West Bank you are speaking right into the narrative of the Arab approach you know it sounds like some little uh, sliver of land next to a river somewhere <laughs> yeah. and yeah. and 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 they've been able to change this narrative. West Bank is actually Judea and Samaria, the mountainous heartland of the entire country. Right. And so, so I, I would just encourage everybody listening: commit yourself to never use the term West Bank again. Use Judea, Samaria, because that that does change the it changes the philosophical you know uh, uh, direction yeah. of of a, of a narrative. Right. When you're saying West Bank, you're you're playing in, as you said, the, to the narrative of the Arab that's trying to delegitimize any Jewish right. That's right. To the homeland. And so for what, how many billion, uh, two, two billion Christians? I don't know how many, uh, mm-hmm. a massive amount of right, people. Right. Uh, and even more, I would say, that are connected to their Bibles. Every yeah. Jewish person throughout the world is also Christian, Jews alike, are connected to the biblical text that says, never, well, not even one time, West Bank. I mean, West Bank no. is a modern invention in the 60s. Absolutely. To create that, that Arab narrative, uh, to fight, and, I, and, and that's, they've been very successful. Right. At, at right. So when you use that phrase, you are you are opting in, if you will, right. to the to the um, to all the the prejudices, the narratives, the agenda, even of the Arab community, which you know it's important to realize uh, does not even recognize there's a nation of Israel. Right. And you know we could talk about the two state option and all that, but but uh, uh, you know, the point is. Um, whether whether you like the two state option or not, uh, that's been presented over and over and over again. And the Arabs are very very clear that they they will never be satisfied until there's a complete obliteration sure. of Israel. Uh, when when you're trying to make a state with a a uh, entity that is uh, it's not even it's not a neighbor. If your neighbors were paying their sons and daughters to kill your sons and daughters, mm-hmm. highest paid salaries of the whole, if your right. neighbor's system, their number one goal was to kill your sons and daughters, mm-hmm. you, you, your other neighbors around wouldn't be telling you, you know, the way to really make this better is, is, to, is to give them a half of your, your farm. 
Right. Like this, this is how absolutely insane this whole two state solution is. There's not a more sworn enemy of Israel than the Arab neighbors and, and the, the closest to home being the Palestinian, so-called Palestinian neighbors that have gathered around right. this area. And now so-called uh, uh, supporters of Israel have the view, especially an ally, America mm. has a, ha, is, is leading in a, in a uh, total sham uh, against the ally to establish a terror, t- to establish terror cells, paid, highest paid employees. Was that a shock to you when you, when you learned that? Yeah. So I'd say the second thing, so the first, you know, you asked for two, uh, I'll give yeah. you, you know, one, one was the West Bank yeah. thing. Uh, so always say Judea, Samaria. Uh, the second one is this notion that this, uh, that American foreign aid, UN sure. foreign aid, all this money, uh, you know, that you would like to think is going to build roads and schools right. and, and, you know, infrastructure and things like that, uh, instead is actually going to create essentially shell, shell settlements that actually encroach yeah. Yeah. on the Oslo Accord uh, zones that were carved out by treaty, by internationally recognized treaty, uh, to secure um, sections for Israelis. And and um, and so this American taxpayer money and, and, and UN money, which is also a lot of American taxpayer money, uh, is actually subsidizing uh, uh, basically shell buildings that— that uh, Arabs are, don't even live in, right. for, but, but to but to encroach and move mm-hmm. forward uh, onto these uh, onto these um, zones, right. and 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 it's not the it's not in no place are the Israelis. Uh, encroaching on the carved out zones that the Arabs were given in the no. Oslo Accords. <laughs> right, it's all the other way around, and that that's yeah. that's. Uh, it's pretty disheartening. I think that brings us to uh, what happened just yesterday. As you're on the ground here, there's nine there, nine Israelis uh, just within the last two weeks have been murdered by terrorists, and those terrorists now are receiving their salaries by American tax dollars, as we just mentioned. Uh, these nine that have have died now, no, we can't say died, murdered. It, it's a total like this is a, a, a horrific situations. Uh, some of these children, five, six year old children. Um, and the international community is coming in not to support Israel and their, their, their rights here, but to support the regime that is attacking Israel and the international aid and all these things is coming in. We have the, these, so Israel, because of this attack, feels the, the ability now at, in its state of suffering and sympathy from the nations around to now legalize nine communities. So this is it's, that's a real hard thing to get our mind around. Anyway, somebody has to die to establish new Jewish towns. Uh, that that doesn't that doesn't. Yeah, it's continue. almost as I as I've been here and seen that uh, that back and forth, you know, uh, tit for tat kind of uh, political thing going on. It's almost like there's a. There's a worldwide. Uh, if you, if you could put the the worldwide Jewish sympathy on an EKG, imagine an EKG, and and you know, so 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 several get murdered, and and you get this little blip, you know, that goes up in, in worldwide sympathy to the Jew, and then and then of course immediately it, it drops down and it goes, and, and so you you kind of have this this pulsing which going is, on. Which to me, if the whole nation of Israel is operating based off of of sympathy. Mm-hmm. They can't, they can't, they're not allowed because the international tensions are so tight that the only, when they can, when they can play sympathy, that's the only way they can build towns and get permits and build communities. Uh, this is a real uh, signal to me and you as internationals, non-Israelis, that we have a problem in our nations and America being number one of, of right. those. Uh, I mean, Europe obviously plays a big role, but America still stands as a superpower. We don't know how long that'll sure. last with our current administrations, but <laughs> yeah. we're hopeful that we can maintain our, our leading. Uh, we would hate to look at, even think of a world that's well, not run by democratic values. I mean, boy, we would be yeah. in a real state. Well, uh, it, it's, it's even, it's even more than that. Uh, you know, there's, there's, uh, there's friendship, and then there's antagonism, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, in my view, uh, we yeah, if we can get political, you know, I I'm happy to not give as an American. I have no problem even not giving foreign aid to Israel. I mean, thank you. Israel can stand on its own. What I don't like 
is the is the antipathy. Mm. Uh, so so you know you you can be a you can be a friend. Those little screens and, and attached that are going to tell you. You can be you. a friend and not subsidize things. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, and just be an encourager. Just don't subvert and. And and uh, and antagonize. Yeah. And, and so what we've got here is uh, it, it doesn't take subsidies to be a friend, yeah. but it does take a lack of antagonism mm-hmm. to be a friend. And that and that's where we are. And we know that uh, whoever is a friend of Israel will be blessed. Well, we started off with that. Genesis and those 12. who won't will be cursed. And to me, that's that's right. A very, very simple promise. So at the same time, these these homes, the permits are being given because of the sympathy. At the same time, the sympathy is not even enough. The sympathy of the nine being murdered, right. uh, terrorism. And then yesterday, we're out on the farms, mm-hmm. and we get the news that there's a vineyard being destroyed. Mm-hmm. Again, to, uh, I would say, to not even sympathy. It's like a... Uh, it's like a, a a back and forth tit for tat for uh, specifically the State Department in America. Yeah. They're they're looking and they're trying to to measure up and say, hey, if we if we have these nine Israelis that are murdered, we can can we please get not can we can we have nine Israeli cities now to be uh, stated as legal by international uh, you know uh, uh, law? And um, that's not quite enough. You'll need to destroy a vineyard, a farmer. I, I want to know because you're a farmer. Yeah. What would you? What do you say? Because obviously, they're destroying a farm because that's a that's a uh, it's one person, it's one man's yeah. uh, income. What, yeah. what, 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 for, give, I mean, give, for, give for, me a view of, of what you what you feel yeah. when you see farmers being attacked. Because uh, you're 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 one of the voices of the farmers. Yeah. Well, uh, you know what 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 you do as a farmer is uh, you know whether you're organic or not, chemical or not, or whatever. You know, uh, uh, farmers are out lonely. Uh, and, 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 and working with their flocks or their land or whatever. And it occupies all of your waking moments. Uh, you're, you're constantly trying to pay your bills. Uh, you're working with this, this place. You get familiar with this place. You, you fall in love with this place. And, um, and then to just see whatever bulldozers come in and, uh, and rip it down. uh, Well, you know, I would just ask the non-farmers in the group, how would you like it tomorrow if a bulldozer came in and, and just uh, leveled your house? Uh, it, 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 it's yeah. an equivalent thing. You, you know your house, you're intimate with your house, you know where the light switches are, you know, and that's the way a farmer is with his land. And, um, and so it's the, it's the same thing, but they're just, there are, there are way fewer farmers than residents. Yeah. And so farmers get the, get the end of the stick. Well, and as you wrote on your blog post, encourage everybody to read the blog post on the Polyface uh, Farm. Check out all, all the uh, posts as you're here. You're writing daily. Um, you mentioned about how the, the farms were this vineyard that was being destroyed. The, the, you talked about it and how this was this is a horrible uh, situation to be to be laid on a farmer uh, here in this area. And there's 65 farmers in this this region that are holding more of Israel's land. We talk about Genesis 12, the, the promise to the land. 65 farmers are holding that promise. Mm-hmm. More than the eight hundred thousand Israelis living in this area, right. the sixty-five farmers are the ones carrying the brunt of that on their shoulders. When we're talking about land mass, uh, these farmers are the ones that are holding it. And so these are the guys that you've come to encourage and say, "Keep going strong." That blessing of Abraham is with you and behind you. And I want to be a part of that. I want to. I want to strengthen you and 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 to see you move forward. Uh, we're just closing up here. I want to just last words on that note. How has it been to encourage farmers? Yeah, in well, the, 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 one of the biggest surprises, the, the biggest ahas that I was not prepared for, was the heart of these farmers. They're they're not making money. Yeah, they're they're working themselves to death. It's idealistic. Yeah, they're working themselves to death. But every one of them, I've so I've got to hold this somehow. I've got to hold this, and it makes you weep and break down mm-hmm. to realize that the heart of these of these guys is all about we've got to hold on to this and occupy this. That's the legacy. That, that that's the legacy that they're on the front lines of of trying to hold and uh, bless them bless them for doing so mr joe on behalf of all the farmers of judea and samaria I, I i'll speak for them all we're so grateful and thankful that you've come and spent your time and, and, and given of your time to come and serve and be a blessing and uh we we do hope that the, the that blessing of abraham follows you back to your farm uh this has been a, a really great we're glad to be able to share with the the audience as well what you're finding and, and we could go for three days straight here on this interview uh with the findings that we've dug into the actual yes. farms and, mm-hmm. and and that's a whole nother thing uh, i would encourage everybody out there that wants to 
to to embrace holistic uh, farming practice and dig deeper into what's actually happening in the uh, in a in a farming and be, secure your food supply. Uh, Joel Salton has endless material in this regard at the Polyface uh, Farm website, polyfacefarms.com. Uh, you can go and check out lots, so much information there, so many books. You've written fifteen yeah. books, yeah. Uh, and uh, to find a man like this, an educator that loves Israel, loves the Jewish people, and wants to see the nation of Israel not just in a, a, a kind of like a wave the flag, say yes, but come and put his feet on the ground here and say, go Israel, go, come out here to the farms and give what you have to give. And that's expertise in helping to see the land of Israel come back to life. Guys, I say that's of uh, biblical proportion. The land of Israel will come back to life. And now we have uh, Joel Salatin, known as the world's most famous farmer here to help Israel get to that goal of seeing its land return. Be a blessing again. With that, guys, thanks again, Joel. Tune out the fake news and tune into what's actually happening here on the mountains of Israel.